guys and welcome to Siska Stitches. Today we are going to be doing a 3-in-1 tutorial. A tutorial on how to make a double layered 1440 degree flare. How to make your peplum stand like this and appear very full. And how to line your peplum stress free. If you are new to my channel, you are welcome. And if you are an old subscriber, I say welcome back. Please click the subscribe button if you are not subscribed yet. And also click the notification bell so you get notified whenever Siska Stitches post new videos. And now we can go ahead and begin the tutorial process. So guys, first things first, we'll begin with our calculations. My waist is 28 inches and I'm going to be adding 4 inches for overlap and also for seam allowance, making that a total of 32 inches. For a 1440 degree flare, we're going to divide our waist measurement by 4. So my new waist measurement will now be 32 divided by 4, which is equal to 8. So formula for radius is circumference over 2 pi. So new circumference, which is 8, divided by 2 times 3.14 will give us what 1.274 inches so i'm going to be making use of an african print fabric this ankara fabric so what i'm going to do first is to fold that fabric into two so after folding it into two before we fold it again we're going to measure remember we calculated uh 1.274 for our radius and i want to know the entire length of fabric i'll be using so this will help me manage my fabric so the length of my shorter flare is six inches and we're going to be adding a 1.5 inch waistband so what i'm going to do is subtract 1.5 from 6 inches we're going to add that to 1.274 for our radius and then add a 1 inch seam allowance for joining both top and bottom giving us a total of 6.774 inches so what i'm going to do is ensure that i fold my fabric to about 6.774 inches and then we're going to you know fold that again so basically i should be having a 6.774 by 6.774 so what i'm going to do first is mark uh 1.275 inches 1.274 inches so i'm going to do that and i mark that all around and once i'm done marking the point starting from that apex that point i'm going to connect it remember we calculated 4.5 inches for our length of peplum excluding our waistband because we'll be adding that 1.5 inch back as waistband so i'm going to mark 4.5 there and then i'm going to add my one inch for seam allowance at top and bottom making that a total of 5.5 inches and i'm going to mark that all around but this is exactly how to do it how to calculate it especially if you're making a detachable peplum you need to subtract your waistband from the entire length of the peplum once i'm done with this now i'm going to cut the pattern out and after cutting we're going to be duplicating this into four and why are we doing that we divided our waist measurement into four so you need to make four of these circles this exact circle so what i'm going to do now is fold it back and after folding it back, we're going to fold our fabric again, not this one we have cut out, the other fabric where we cut out from. I'm going to fold it again and I'm going to place this that I have cut out on it and I ensure that it aligns properly so that you don't have any excess. Once it is aligned properly, I'm just going to use this pattern that I have cut out to, on top of it to trace it out. So we're going to be cutting two more of this after cutting this one making a total of four so i have all four right here all of them are forming a circle and in their own right they are circles of their own before you can join your fabric together you have to cut open one end of all four of them because you have to join all this together to form a long continuous um circle before we join this we actually have to cut the bigger flare i'm not going to start the process all over again i'm going to use this shorter one that i have done right here to cut the bigger flare so i fold my fabric again but this time around i'm going to fold it a lot more bigger than i did the first time and then i'm going to place the pattern on it and i ensure that it aligns properly right at the apex area because the extension we are going to be doing is at the bottom if you don't do it this way your waist measurement for the bigger flare might be more than you bargain for so ensure that it aligns properly such that the waist measurement of the smaller one will be the same as the bigger one and i'm going to be extending this by three inches right from the top 
right from the bottom of the smaller flare so i mark three inches down all around the bottom and then i'm going to connect the points and then cut it out at both the bottom and the top as well and you're going to see exactly that so once i cut the bottom i cut the top the arc around the top so that it aligns well with the um, smaller one and we're going to be duplicating the bigger flare in four places or the sorry the longer flare in four places and you can see how the two peplum or the two flare aligned so i'm going to take out those pins use the bigger uh, flare or the longer flare to cut out three more of that making a total of four so once we have the four now the next thing i'm going to do is use each of the flare both the big one and the small one we're going to cut the lining out i'm done cutting the lining and what i'm going to do next is to cut open an end of all of them the main fabric both the longer one and the shorter one and the lining as well and that is exactly what i'm going to do for all of them i actually said that we're going to make a flare to stand and i'm going to be using what is called a peplum stay it's a fusible interface in most interfaces that are in the market are actually fusible in my local fabric market this is called a peplum stay in order to ensure that this fuses with your fabric you will need a source of heat usually a pressing iron to do this so i'm just going to take that all around and ensure that it fuses right if you notice that there is a um your fabric is detaching from the fusible interfacing just apply a lot more heat right there but please don't let your fabric burn and then once it's okay we are going to cut that out so that is exactly what I'm going to do. So you can actually ensure that your circle is together before you place it on the fusible interfacing or you cut open one end and fuse it together. Either way, you're going to cut it out. So I just drew a straight line now so that I can cut out that small circle in the middle. Once we are done with this, I'm going to repeat it for the other flare for the other circle that i've cut out for the big one for the small one because we want all of them to stand and you can see how stiff the circle is actually looking so this is what is going to give it the standing effect then what i'm going to do next is join each of the flare that have together like i said you have to cut open one end and join all of them together to give you a continuous circle i'm just using my dressmaker pins to join all of them together so that i can have a continuous circle and once i'm done i'm just going to take that to my machine and sew all the ends by 0 0.5 inches seam allowance leaving only one end open so once i'm done with this like i said we're going to sew this with a 0 0.5 inch seam allowance for both the big and the small one and i'm going to do this for the lining as well so after sewing all the circles by a half an inch seam allowance for both the main fabric and the lining i'm going to be attaching the lining to the main fabric and i ensure that the joinings on both the main fabric aligns to the joining on the lining as well the reason why i'm doing this is such that when i'm sewing i don't have issues with my fabric shifting or moving and i made sure to hold this down by using my pins and i smooth the lining on the main fabric and i place my pins so it's important that you do this smoothing your lining on your main fabric use your pins to hold it down in place this would make sewing the lining on the main fabric much more easier which without you having to deal with excesses or skewed circles as you sew along so this is quite a lot of pins and like i said you do this it will make joining your lining to your main fabric much more easier so i'm going to go ahead and sew the bottom of this by a 0 0.5 inch seam allowance but before that i just want to show you why it is necessary to ensure that the joinings match by the time i got to this point i realized i had a little bit of excess on the lining so what i needed to do was just sew that excess off and then use my pins to hold it in place so after sewing with a 0 0.5 inch seam allowance i'm going to notch the edges the reason we are notching the edges is such that it will make top stitching the bottom much more easier and why are we top stitching the bottom we are top stitching so that after after sewing it's going to stay nice and it's going to stay nice and flat by the time we flip it over in order to top stitch i'm just going to flip my excess allowance at the bottom towards my lining and sew on that place please don't sew towards your main fabric if not you're going to find your stitch 
on your main fabric so i'm done sewing that this is how it looks after i have pressed it it's looking nice and neat and i do this for the other one as well for the bigger flare as well so right here we just have a continuous circle going on here this is actually a lot of flare after this now we're going to seal up the end of the circles not the top the end of the circles and in order to do that i'm going to flip my um fabric inside out or outside in and we're going to be sewing the end by 0.5 inch seam allowance and i want to advise that your seam allowance at the bottom flip it towards your lining if you don't flip it towards your lining your lining after sewing your lining may jump so this is what i'm going to do flip it and sew it by half an inch seam allowance i'm going to do this for the other end as well and then repeat the same thing for the bigger flare after i'm done sewing we're going to flip it right back and i'm going to use my scissors to poke the edges out so that it comes out nice and clean so this is exactly what i do this is one trick i do please don't use a sharp object if not you're going to tear a uh, rip through your um lining fabric after this guys we are going to align the shorter flare place it on top of the longer flare and this is what is going to give the layered effect i'm going to pin it down this is going to make sewing this much more easier and i'm going to be sewing by a 0.25 inch seam allowance the reason why i'm joining this together is so that when i'm attaching my band is not a uh, one one flare or one peplum is not moving away from the other so just to hold it in place and before we attach our band or before we cut out our band i'm going to measure the entire length of the waist of this flare you actually need to measure this so this will determine the amount the length of your um waistband so i measured this and i had a total of 34 inches the calculation we did earlier was 28 plus 4 inches extra which made that 32 but at the end of measuring this i had 34 and i'm going to attribute this to the fold on the circles which gave a lot of allowance or which gave excess fabric to this so guys i have 34 and i'm going to be adding 3 inches to my waistband making that 37 sorry not 36 actually i'm working with 37 here my waistband is measuring 38 inches in length 37 that i have said earlier then 1 inch seam allowance on both ends and is measuring four inches in width i folded half an inch inwards on both ends and then we're going to fold it again so this is going to give me 1.5 inches for my waistband before we continue i'm going to seal off one end of the waistband i'm going to i'm going to sew that end by 0 0.5 inches i forgot to tell you guys about this part i used a fusible interfacing for the waistband to just give it a little bit of body so i'm going to just sew that now and after sewing we're going to flip it right back but in order to ensure that the edge comes out okay what i'm going to do is trim off a little bit of excess on that edge so that the edge can come out nice and neat so that is exactly what i'm going to do flip it right back then use my scissors to poke the edge now we're going to be attaching the band or the peplum to the band either way and you need to sandwich your peplum or your flare in your waistband one thing i want to advise is this please ensure that you pin that first part especially that beginning pin it down so that when you take this to your machine it doesn't move out so i'm going to use my dressmaker pins these dressmaker pins actually saved my life during this um, tutorial process it just made everything stress-free so if you guys want to go ahead and pin this throughout the entire length of your flare is fine but i discovered that i didn't really need to do that so after going a couple of inches i had to um just stop there and while i was sewing on my machine i was looking underneath to ensure that i was actually sewing on the other side of the waistband so that i don't have any gaps after i have sewn this so i'm done sewing this now and then at the end of this i realized that the three inches that i gave the three inches extra i gave to my waistband was actually needed because the excess i got after actually attaching my waistband to this was just about one inch and we added three inches to this so it was just intuition that i just add that three inches and after sewing this we are going to be attaching a hook and eye so this is called a hook and eye 
and i'm going to attach this to the waistband this will help to secure it properly so because this um peplum is overlapping i'm just going to add a couple more to this making a total of three so that it is extra extra secure we have actually come to the end of this tutorial i hope after watching this video you'll be able to make your peplum this way i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial thank you for watching guys and i'm going to see you in my next video bye guys